Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. That's right, you tell him, little buddy. You listen to Jerry was live worldwide right here on Positive Power. Double XI Christian Media. Can you feel the power? Tell me, family, can you feel the power? All right, we got a great guest for you tonight. That's right, tonight we got Tasha L. Campbell's going to be here. And my co-host, you know so well on WATC 57.2 in Atlanta, Georgia. And you can catch on Survival Radio. And, of course, you can catch it right here on Positive Power with Dobek Star Christian Media, Music Vision Television. And that is Paula G, the voice. All right, let's get Paula G. What's going on, Paula G, the voice? What's up? Hey, what's going on, my brother? All is well. How are you and, this evening? Well, I, I wanted to say all is well in Charm City, but it's, it's not all true. <laughs> Things didn't go too well Uh-oh. this oh. weekend. <laughs> oh, didn't go, didn't go too well, huh? Nah. Our franchise, our NFL pro football team, had dropped the L. People not feeling too good today. Oh. Monday was kind of rough. It was, al- it was almost it was a day off for a lot it was, of people. It was a rough. It was- <laughs> rough day at the job. Yeah, it was rough, man. You can't help but listen to Sports Talk Radio because you want to hear what they're saying about your franchise quarterback. But, you know, they, some of the people are pretty, right. pretty good on it. They understand he's only 23, second year in the league, one full-year quarterbacking. And um, and he he had a phenomenal MVP year. You can't take take that away from him. But he can't, he can't win the game by himself. You need help, you know. And right. it wasn't his best game. Yeah. You know, but you know, sometimes you can win with yeah. your your worst game if your team pull through. You know, so that's what he, it is. He, he needed some help, huh? Yeah, they they dropped a couple crucial. Pa- Matter of fact, it was th- it was three touchdowns that they should have had. Three. Um, of course, you know, some things that happened. He threw a really good pass deep, but the receiver he's kind of mm-hmm. small, so he bounced around off of the. <laughs> the defender, so he didn't get in the end zone, and they stopped. I think they five yards short, and I think they did score. But it was another time one guy was running right in there, and the ball bounced off his chest. And another one, Ooh. he dropped the ball. So they left some points on the on the on the field. You can't do yeah, that, but you know, you know that you know that tonight and tomorrow and the next day and probably for a minute they're gonna be they're gonna be feeling that. Man, we're gonna be feeling this be, hurt. We be, be playing that over and over there. I know, but I think this one. I think this one's gonna sting all okay. the way to the Super Bowl, right? Because you're gonna look at the teams that's in it, and, and we can beat them. We have to deal with, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, oh. I mean, I'm going to enjoy. That's so, that's so hard. Yeah, it is hard. I mean, I'm going to enjoy the games next week and the week after because you know there's no stress of your team playing, but you still feel like they could have won it all if, if they would have just stayed with their own game plan. What got them there? And it, you, you know, as a fan, you'd be like, "What? What are they thinking about? They pay these guys all this money to win, and they go another direction. <laughs> that don't make no sense, you know." <sighs> well, you, but you know, that's a lot of pressure, though. That's a lot. You know, that's a lot of pressure out there on that. On that field, because if you, you know, you look, look at them, sometimes I look at them and just the look on their face, you could, you could see the stress because they realize mm-hmm. there's a whole stadium full of people in here mm-hmm. watching what I do, that my next move could make it or break it. I'm getting paid all this money. That's a whole lot of pressure yeah. on a young, uh, and a young person, what, 22, 23, 24 years old. Good Lord. But I'm going to tell That's you, Paula, some of them guys have been doing it all their life. All their life, you know, all the way from they, then. I mean, you yeah, go, that's true, and you know, they're still young. Yeah, they are. But you know what's funny? You look at YouTube sometimes, and um, and you know, you you look at the guy, and it, it looks like the same guy. It you know, in Pop Warner or high school, dominating his league. Because normally, I always mm-hmm. say that the the athletes that's in a professional sports are the best in the world. I guarantee, if you followed them when they were in Pop Warner to high school or rec ball, they probably dominated that. That that league, and then next thing you know, you hear about them in the big Division One schools, and next thing you know, they just walking in, into the NFL. And you look at those tapes on YouTube, and you see those same guys dominating. <laughs> you say, "Yeah, they they deserve to be in a pro." 
You know, you can see and they meet it. and they meet each other in, at the NFL in the NFL. Yeah, because a lot of them right now, a lot of those guys are, are starting to um, have played. You know, because now I guess because you know, rec leagues are heavily funded now. A lot of these guys are playing in the same tournaments together. A lot of time you get the the senior bowl where it's, it's the best seniors in the world and everything, and and they get a chance to meet up in in, in in the NFL or the NBA, and they say, "Yeah, I played against him in rec ball." You know, you never heard that mm-hmm. that off. You know, not not when I was really watching sports, not like now. You know, or, or when they, you know they're going to school and they go to the same college and then they you know graduate and they wind up on different they wind up on different teams. That's a little awkward. Yeah, but I mean, but, but, it's, but then friends, I've yeah. been told that it's not because nope. the bottom line is the, it's the dollars. Yeah, I mean, and they've been they've and been playing against, each, but they've been playing against each other for all their life. You know, that that good guy against that good guy, and and you also finding that there's a lot of brothers that's playing in the league together now. It's a lot of brothers, twins. Yeah, you name it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Pretty, that's pretty common twins there. And, yeah, siblings. You know, a lot of siblings. Yep. You got a families with what three, four, five boys in the family. Yep, and two or three of them playing in the league. And they were all out there. Yep, early on, man. Yeah. You know, like Drew Brees, like Peyton Manning, he was one of the first, they were one of the first brothers that you remember playing at the same position was the Mannings. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the guys were mostly on defense or they were linemen. You know, they were big dudes. And now you're starting to, you know, see a, a lot of guys coming in the league. You know, some of them playing the same positions too, which is really odd. Yeah. But, you know. That's our parents. That's, 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 yeah, a lot of them. That's their life. That's all they've done. That's all they've known. Yep. Yep. Sports. Football. Sports. Football, football. Tennis. Bowling. I mean, I know guys have been bowling all their life, yeah. and they they pro pro bowlers. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, we got a yeah, great that's guest. Like brushing the teeth. That's right. Well, Paula G, we got a great guest for you. Batman's time is up. It's almost 10 after. It was great chatting with you. And like always, uh, you know, Bye keep far. doing what you're doing, you know. <laughs> so um, you got yeah. to say hi to your guest before I turn the mics over to you. Hello, okay. Miss Campbell. Welcome to Positive Power. How you doing? This is Jerry Voice Live. I am doing great and excited about being on today. Night. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome, and thank you for accepting it. Um, anything we could do for you, please let us know. Um, Paul and I, we got a bunch of stuff going on in the region between Maryland and Atlanta. Um, you know, reach out to us if you're in the area. We got we got shows that's being taped constantly, so stay in contact with us. Just stay connected, okay? Appreciate that. I would certainly do so. I yeah. appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. God is good. All right, Paula, the show is all yours. Batman is on mute. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Batman, and we'll swing back around to you at the close of the show. But uh, if you're just joining us, you are listening to Late Night Radio with Jerry Voice Live and Paula G. Right here on Positive Power 21. Hope you all have had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend and a wonderful day. And I want to give a shout out to my sister, Shay Samuels. If she's out there, she's listening. I love you. Just a dynamic young lady doing a lot of dynamic things. And you all make sure you get out there, support her, check out her website. Shay Sams, S-A-M-S is is her um, Facebook. She does a wonderful motivational uh, 15 minutes of motivation on Monday. She's on YouTube. So make sure you check out my sister in radio. We tag team these Monday nights. She does the first and third and I do the second and fourth. So uh, it's just a blessing to be a part of the Positive Power 21 family. But this evening I have a, a wonderful, phenomenal guest this evening. She is an author. She's an empowerment speaker, a business and ministry mentor. She's a certified coach who helps leaders move forward. She is walking in her gifts. She's walking in her talents and she's doing what God has called her to do. So please join me in welcoming her to Positive Power 21 Late Night Radio, the one, the only, Miss Tarsha L. Campbell. How are you, my sister? I am doing quite well. I'm excited about joining you tonight. I've heard so many great things about you through reading your your um, website. So I am pumped and ready to be here. <laughs> oh, Jesus. thank you. Paula White. Thank you. Paula G. Excuse me. Paula G. 
Well, you know, you know, we we it's it's so it's so interesting when you reach a certain point in your in your life in your seasons I call them seasons of life you know you reach a certain point and I spe- I think a lot of us are reaching that point now where we're, we're really walking and stepping into who it is that we are walking and stepping into our calling our, our, our you know what we have been anointed to do what we have been gifted to do the the talents that we have so it's really an exciting time I think in, in seeing a lot of my brothers and my sisters just you know step out on that journey and you yourself are on an amazing journey and where I I hope we get to everything that you are doing because you you really really are doing so much and I just love the journey that you're on and I love the message and the platform that you're on and what it is that you are speaking to the people about um, how to realize what you envision that statement right there just how to real how to realize you help people to realize what it is they envision how do you go about doing that well the key thing is first of all you have to understand the power of vision because mm. that is something that God has placed inside of each and every one of us who are able to make it to this realm of living um, as we come through the womb of a woman that is one of the things mm-hmm. that make us like God uh, that has been placed on the inside of us. And so in order for us to envision, to realize what we envision, we must first realize that we have that, I call it a superpower on the inside of us that allows mm-hmm. us to see the end from the beginning and then back ourselves back up and recreate what we have seen. So that's, that's how we start with, with realizing what we mm-hmm. envision, and then we have to take the necessary steps and just recreate And I I like to say that we're co-creators with God in the earth. He gives Mm -hmm. us a vision, you know, show us what it could be and how Mm -hmm. it should be. But then it's up to us to be able to take hold to what he has given us through the power and in the realm of vision and then just recreate exactly what he has shown us, grabbing the materials that we need, grabbing the gifted people that we need, and just making Mm -hmm. that thing come to manifestation in the earth. So it's a, it's a powerful, powerful thing that all of us should be aware of. Right, and it sounds like from what from what you have described that it's a journey, and it's a process in 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 reaching that point, and you know, working in and through those gifts. So, being that it is a process, and mm-hmm. you, you know, utilizing those gifts and the and the mentality. I think you mentioned you know realizing the power of it and the mentality mentality of it you also have 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 uh, quoted uh, a, I guess I could call it a saying about an Amazon mentality talk to us about the Amazon mentality and how that can be detrimental or, or helpful or what is an Amazon mentality well I think it can be something that that's not always beneficial when it okay. comes to our journey Journey, because mm-hmm. if you think about it, in any type of, of journey that you're going to take, it's going to require some type of process that you go through yes. and different cycles that you go through and different seasons that you go through. And mm-hmm. what I coined as the Amazon mentality is that we, we're all used to going Going online to Amazon, and if we are Prime members especially, we want to go mm-hmm. find what we want, um, mm-hmm. pay for it, and expect to get it, it within one one day or two days. And right. so I'm finding a lot of people, they're not willing to go through the process that we have to go through in our journeys to get to where God wants us to be. And so we want it either quick or we want it free, because that's another thing that Amazon um, will offer to you as a prime mem- um, member. Um, you can get it quick and you can get the shipping for free. And I'm finding that anything of value is going to cost you some. Thing. It's going to cost you in your journey. It's going to cost your time. It's going to cost your you being dedicated to the, the purpose and the destiny that, that God has called you to. And sometimes when he reveals what he wants to do in and through us, he needs to work some things out of us first. And so that's a mm-hmm. part of the 
the process as well. And so we can't expect all the time when a prophetic word comes or, or we see ourselves doing certain things in our dreams and in our vision that is going to happen the next day. It, it takes planting that seed in our heart, seeing what God sees for us, and then being able to com- cultivate that thing within us and put ourselves in the proper environment so that we can bring forth much fruit as the Bible begins to talk about in John. Mm. You know, you spoke at at the top of the show when we were uh, sharing about how to realize what you envision, Mm -hmm. and you you kind of described a bit of a birthing process and the womb, and one of your your platforms speaks to the womb or is entitled womb. Can you tell us about that? Um, Yes, I'd be happy to. It's actually a vision that I started uh, mm-hmm. and a mission about four years ago, um, 2016, and it's, ca- it's, it's called WOOM, and WOOM stands for Women Ordained for Ministry and Business, and it's uh, WOOM Mentoring Incubator and Delivery Room. And, and the purpose of this particular um, incubator program is to help provide a safe haven for purpose-bearing leaders Um, to go to develop their vision. And another thing we focus on in this incubator is to help them to birth the mission that they have on the inside, whether it's ministry or it's business. And then that third component of what this um, ministry and business incubator is all about is also to help them to launch revenue streams to fund the dream that God has given them. And any time that we set forth to do something for him, it's going to take resources. And so this this program is designed to really help women to position themselves, um, whether it's in their community or in the marketplace or even um, on a ministerial level uh, as in regards to understanding 21st century technology, because I'm telling you, the game has changed with the use of mm-hmm. social media and the use of um, um, email marketing and all the other the things that go along with, with this rapid pace that we're now in. And it's causing many of, many of us in the body of Christ to be left behind because we really don't understand how, how to grasp the different technologies and the different um, services that are now available to us that can launch us to a whole nother place. And I, I, and I often like to see it as God placing us, once we, once we gain this knowledge base and this understanding of how to use this technology and to use the different resources that are now available, it catapults us to where we envision ourselves to be when we're able to implement the different things that are now available in the marketplace. So that's what that program is all about, is helping uh, women of God get ready to make a tremendous impact in their world, whether it's ministry or business. When, um, and I think that's, when I, when I saw that, I'm, I'm like, wow, that is so huge, you know, um, because we're all on this journey, and it's and and I and I love what you said about the process. You know, it takes it takes time, and I think that's something like you said with that whole Amazon mentality that a lot of people don't understand. You know, they want we we're in this microwave society. You know, we want everything yesterday, and not realizing that 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 a lot of times it's the experience within the journey, not so much the destination. Although the destination is important, but that experiences that we learn along the way, the people that we interact with and how we grow is, is uh, where, our, where our growth lies and where our, our gift lies in that journey. What does one do when destiny calls? Well, the first thing you must do is answer the call. And I believe mm. everyone that, that, that's allowed to have the privilege to live in in this earth realm we have a particular destiny and i and i don't like to see destiny as just one destination Mm -hmm. that we go to but destiny Mm -hmm. can be um, played out in our life at different seasons of our life and in my book um, five qualities of a woman of destiny um, when i was researching for that book and even studying and preparing myself um, before the lord um, i looked up the definition of of destiny, and it really didn't quite speak to me. And as mm-hmm. I began to think about it and meditate on it and ask the Holy Spirit to, to tell me what destiny was from his, 
his perspective, he, he revealed something to me that just exploded in my spirit. He began to say that destiny is a God-appointed person going to a God-appointed place at a God-appointed time for a God-appointed mm. purpose. And so all along our journey, there will be um, different benchmarks in our walk that will be that point of destiny for us. That's that place where God has assigned us for a particular purpose at a particular time to fulfill his will in the earth. And so all of us have destiny because all of us have a a divine purpose that we have been um, given. And I think it's an extreme privilege when we can understand that God has chosen us. The Bible talks about what is man that God is mindful of him. Though we're a mm-hmm. little bit lower than the angels, still he crowned us with his glory and with his, 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 his honor. And I, and I tell you, there's nothing like realizing what your purpose is and then joining that with an understanding that there is a destination or there is a destiny that I must mm-hmm. reach and fulfill because there may be people waiting for me, there may be nations is waiting for me. There may be a cause waiting for me, but I know it's all because I'm going to fulfill something on God's behalf in the earth. Powerful. Wow, it is. Amen. 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 You know, as you were speaking, it reminded me because I love quotes. I know a lot of people love quotes. And it reminded me of a Miles Monroe quote about Mm -hmm. the richest place on the planet being the cemetery of so many people not so many people living their life and not knowing their purpose or using their gifts or reaching their destiny. So I think what you just said was just huge in that, you know, when you, it, it's, it's such a, it, it's almost, you're almost at a loss for words when you really find out what your purpose is, mm-hmm. you know, what your purpose, what the thing, the gifts that God has placed inside of you and how he intends for you to use those gifts uh, to you as you, as we journey through this walk you know called life Mm -hmm. and uh it's just i think all of all of the the different platforms that you have and and the different um projects that you have are just 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 amazing just absolutely amazing so share with the audience just some of the other uh ventures that you have and some of the other your books and and some of your other other programs that you have because i see you love to write (laughs) i do yeah, I consider it a privilege to be able to write, mm-hmm. write on behalf of the Lord. But one of my more recent um, um, scribal projects that was released is it's called My Next Step Vision Board Dream Journal and Planner. And that whole project was birthed out of a session that I had with some of the members of the Womb Mentoring Incubator. And I was mm-hmm. teaching a class on using your creative and artistic gifts. And then as I was sharing with them, something just clicked in my spirit because I've always wanted to do a, a journal, create a journal to help other people. Uh, it came to me and it came um, as a vision. I saw it. I saw this, mm. this that would be used by people. At, um, they would basically put their, make different um, mini vision boards inside this mm-hmm. book. and. When, and it will be for um, seven important areas of their life, spiritual, financial, um, relationship, also in that business and career. We have ministry, education. So you make your six mini vision boards. And then once that's done, then you go forward and use the next step strategy that, um, that I share in this book where every day, and it's written out in grids for those different categories, you're going to take one or two steps toward what what you envisioned or what you have placed on your many vision boards. And so this book was also developed because as a coach, I've worked with uh, leaders and many of them, once we finish their session, they can clearly see what it is that God has called them to and they even recognize their gifts, but they didn't have a strategy for implementation and execution. Mm -hmm. And so as I taught that wound class and I thought about my coaching clients that I wanted to see um, manifest what they have already shared in our session. It all mm-hmm. came together in this one um, empowerment resource is what I like to call 
but to help people to stay focused throughout the year and not lose um, any momentum that they have gained from the coaching session or, or, in, or at the beginning, you know, you know, we're all pumped about what we're going to do. Yes. I'm going to exercise, <laughs> save more All money. All I'm going to do for the month yeah, of the year. <laughs> I'm going to start my nonprofit. But this power, empowerment resource will help you to stay focused, but you, you're supposed to use it every single day when you write out your steps and you plan your day. And I really believe it brings together um, what I call a divine principle um, about writing the vision and making it plain. It's found in Habakkuk. Uh, I believe that was a divine principle and strategy for manifestation that was given to us that we can use so that we, as the people of God, can see the things that God has placed in our hearts to do can come to this place of, of fulfillment and manifestation. So that's what this project is all about. I use it personally every day, and it's helped me to stay focused and with all the hats that I wear, it helps me to stay balanced and to make sure yeah. I meet every um, appointment, every goal that I've set. And it's, it's just been a powerful resource for me and those who have um, decided to use it in their daily walk. So you're you're a product of your own process. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you can't, you can't you teach process. it if you're not going to live it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yes, exactly. And, and, and you know, it's 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 great what you said because at the begin like you said at the beginning of the year we're all pumped up and we really need a tangible tool that we can go to on a daily basis to keep us focused and and on track because if we don't you know the 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 the, the stuff of life yes. starts crowding our day and it crowds out and the next thing we know it's I was like, okay, where'd the last nine months go? You know, I was on track and next thing I knew I turned around and eight, nine months have gone by and, and, you know, I've, I've become uh, stagnant. So I, lo- I love what your uh, site says. You go from stagnation to manifestation. I love that. <laughs> Where you have to keep you, you know, keep you going and, and, and keep you moving. And you mentioned earlier a, a bit about the five qualities of, a, of the, of a woman. Of destiny. The first, of her destiny. What what is the first? And you wrote a book about the first quality of a woman of destiny. Mm-hmm. Well, with this particular book, I wrote. I pulled the five qualities from the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus, in in Luke one. I was asked to speak at a women's conference, and that was the topic I was given to speak about her and the qualities that she had. And as I did so, something started. Started to emerge. I'm like, oh, wait a minute! I'm seeing something here, and I saw five qualities that this this woman had that made her the ultimate woman of destiny. That that and we're still talking about her today. And that first quality that she possessed was she fears not. That's the first quality of a of a mm-hmm. woman of destiny. She, she fears not. And any time, um, if you look through scripture and you look through any um, prominent person, one of the first things Things that most of us have to battle is is that fear demon or that fear emotions because sometimes it could be a, a spirit of fear and sometimes it can just be an emotion of fear that we have to overcome and so in order for us to really answer that call of destiny we have to overcome the impact that fear can have on our lives because if we're not able to overcome it it can leave us in a, a paralytic state. Where where we mm, come on. Saying, but we don't move on what God is saying. And so understanding that um, even if you have to do it afraid, like Joyce Meyer says, you yes. have to step out and do it. And then once you start to just step out and do it, there comes a divine momentum that keeps you in the flow of what God has for you. And then you're able to move forward. And, and we'll, we'll be just like Mary. We'll be the, that ultimate woman of destiny, too, when we're able to to overcome that fear and then walk out those other five qualities that she possesses. Wow. Wow. And that is so, and isn't that the the thing that just is so incredibly debilitating to so many is that, is that fear, It is. you know, of of not, of of, uh, just fear, 
mm-hmm. you know, in general, and fear in general. And then also, you know, and I was looking at, I was looking through um, your website and, and some of the other uh, things that you were doing. And I think one of the other things, too, that can be a, of a hindrance, and, and you wrote about it um, in reference to your grandma's devil, grandma's devil, generational mm-hmm. curses. Yeah, yeah. Share how you, how, yeah, share some thoughts on that and how you see that as being a hindrance as well. Oh, that can be a major hindrance in our lives, especially mm-hmm. if we're not aware of it. And in that particular um, teaching, um, Grandma's devil sh- Devils Shutting the Door to Generational Curses, I spoke about how sometimes we are struggling with things that we we don't even know where where they're coming from or where they, where they came from, but these are things that were introduced into our bloodline maybe um, um, ancestors ago, and because um, that thing was not dealt with, that iniquity was not dealt with in our bloodline, um, Satan has the legal right to to attack us or or to inflict us with that or use it against us. And so what I was sharing in that particular teaching is um, there was something that happened in, in my household, and anyone that knows my family, they know that we, know that we are godly people. And so when this thing happened that day, I, I went in and I went to my bed and I began to pray. I was crying. I said, Lord, how did this happen? How did this happen to us? We serve mm-hmm. you. We pay our tithes. We give our offering. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, you're dealing with a generational curse. And it wasn't even something that that we were aware of, but he began to mm. where it started and how how we needed to deal with it. And if we didn't deal with it, how not only would uh, it impact that generation that it was impacting, but it was going to also impact further generations that were still to come. And so the thing that we have to understand, the scripture talks about it, how um, we, we would deal with um, generation curses or the sins of the father way back when and so we have mm-hmm. to get to a place where we can break that cycle in our life and in order for to, us to break that cycle of generational curses is that we have to recognize that there is a, a pattern of iniquity in our lives and when I speak of iniquity I mean there is a pattern where uh, 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 it went from sin to transgression to iniquity and now that thing has become an idol in our lives so so much so that it controls us. When we and Paul talks about it, when I want to do right, evil was always present, and it may be that thing that you're struggling with, um, a, an addiction. You don't know where it came from. A, a, a could be a, a dietary problem that you have. It can, and it, it runs the gamut of things that we can be struggling with that was introduced from a previous generation, and we need to come to God in complete um, repentance and so. Sometimes we have to fast for it, us to be delivered from this thing, but it is something that needs to be um, looked at and dealt with, or our children or our great grandchildren or, or, or mm-hmm. will be be suffering with it for, for years to come. Yes, and you know, and oh gosh, that's so powerful what you said because when it when it is generational like that, we are I, you know I feel and you you can speak to it and, and correct me if I'm wrong. We're, it's as if we're born with it and it, it resides in our subconscious at birth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. You know? It, re- it resides in the subconscious. It can mm-hmm. it also move within the realm of our, our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. And if we're not, not careful, it can also um, operate even within our physical body. And a, and, and a good example of that is like when you go to the doctor, Doctor, and he began to actually write down your family's medical history. And so there mm-hmm. might have been someone in your family that had heart disease or cancer was a problem or diabetes. And so this is, a, as a to me, a, in my study and in my research, can be a, a, a good indication of a generational curse where someone um, has allowed, maybe even, say, for instance, diabetes, the sin of overeating. If, mm-hmm. As an outworking of uh, overeating or eating too many sweets, this thing has control over them, and now it's developing to diabetes, which 
which yes. the thing about it is that when we cross these different lines into iniquity and idolatry, we open the door for Satan to have free reign in our life. And so he can go in and out. And we, we, we want to control it, but we can't control it because it becomes that power that's, that's driving us to do things that we don't even want to do. And so that's the whole basis of a, a generational curse. Yeah, yeah. You know, and also, as you were sharing, I was thinking of, um, you know, another scenario that, that was been shared with me some years ago, and it speaks to, in addition to the generational curses, but occurrences and experiences that may occur in either our youth or our youth, but our pre-verbal stage of our mm-hmm. lives, mm-hmm. where there's something traumatic in our pre-verbal stage that occurs that, you know, and they, you know, a lot of times we, we think, well, children are young, they don't realize, they don't recognize, they, 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 don't, they don't understand, but they do. Mm-hmm. They do. They may not be able to verbalize how they feel or, or you know, how it settles in their spirit, but but they do understand. And a lot of times those, those um, oh gosh, those, those seeds that were planted at such a young age, those traumatic experiences also become a part of, become a part of us. We're mm-hmm. not able to handle whatever it is that has occurred. And as we grow, we find different ways to cope with it. Like mm-hmm. you said, it could be eating, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, well, whatever it is, find different, not necessarily health, healthy ways to cope with it, and that behavior also manifests into, mm-hmm. you know, into ne- into negative behavior. So it really, it really, uh, it it really takes some looking in the mirror, which is another title <laughs> of one of your uh, one of your books, "The Woman in the Mirror." Tell us about that. Oh, that that was that is a powerful series. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit gave me over a series. It was over a series of ten years that this thing unfolded, and how it mm-hmm. unfolded in my life was I was invited to speak at a women's conference, and every year they would invite me to speak, and I would get a prophetic vision of this woman standing in front of the mirror. And that, and that woman standing in front of the mirror represented some type of disposition that I had or some negative thought that I had about myself. And so the first installment in that series, um, I began to talk about woman in the mirror, case of mistaken identity. And in that particular message, I began to share with the women how throughout life we encounter all types of mirrors. Um, symbolically our parents become a mirror our siblings become a mirror our peers in school and on through our whole journey in life we encounter all types of mirrors society ministry uh, just a whole gamut of things and so a mirror would do one or two things it'll tell you the the the, the reality of what you are but when you look in the mirror it'll also tell you what you're not and so sometimes in life when we encounter these different mirrors they tell us the truth about who we are we are, we're beautiful, we're smart, we're gifted, we're talent, talented, but sometimes our mirrors tell us negative things that are not true about us. You're dumb, you're stupid, you mm-hmm. never make it, no one would ever love you. And so when we begin to look in these negative mirrors, we get a different mm-hmm. view of ourselves. And so God began to deal with me um, personally in this message, message because I have been serving the Lord, speaking, ministering, um, got saved when I was 12 years old, started ministering when I was 15, and speaking mm-hmm. to some, laying hands on the sick, they recover. I didn't like me, though. I did not mm-hmm. like me. And so the scripture came to mind to love your love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your brother as yourself. So how could I do that when I didn't even love me? And so he began mm-hmm. to deal with me through this series, tearing down um, these different different layers that I had about myself and the disposition I had about myself and the sabotaging um, um, mindsets that I had about myself. And then me being transparent in front of the people when I would go every year, I was delivered and they were delivered too. And so 
at the end of that first uh, message, a case of mistaken identity, I came to realize that I couldn't listen to what my negative mirrors were saying, focus on what the positive mirrors were saying, but most of all, focus on what God and his word says to me, because, you know, the, the word of God is a mirror. And, and as I began to study the word and spend my quiet time with the Lord, he began to reveal to me who I really am and who he created me to be in the earth. And that com- completely dismantle every negative, distorted image that I had about myself. Because, you know, your your identity and your destiny is tied to your identity. So in order for you to fully walk out your destiny, you first must first understand who you are in God. And so that's what that series is all about. Him mm-hmm. just layers off of me, layers off of me, because one of the messages in that series also is Woman in the Mirror, on God. Godly soul ties break free to break through. So that particular year, he dealt with me about un- ungodly soul ties that I had that was keeping me from being all that he wanted me to be. So it's a powerful, life-changing um, series that revolutionized my life and the lives mm-hmm. of those who that were, who were able to hear it and those that grabbed the book and read it. So uh, I, I just love sharing that because I just I just love the freedom and the, and just the sheer mm-hmm. liberation that that people experience through the power of God's word and coming into a revelatory insight of what it is the enemy is using against us Mm -hmm. to keep us from being what God wants us to be. I could talk all night about that. And, you know, (laughs) and perhaps at some point we will have that opportunity. (laughs) But what I, I love about your brand and just listening to you speak this evening, Tarsha, is that, you know, I have this saying sometimes when I'm sharing, you know, my journey of some of my Experiences and I, you know, I tell people, especially my years as a military spouse, and I, t- I say to them, this is not something that I read in the book in a book. This mm-hmm. is something that I've lived. This yeah. is a journey that I've taken that I have gone through myself, so I can speak to it with mm-hmm. with, with with confidence. And as, as you've been sharing this evening, just so many different powerful aspects of your ministry and what you do, it is so evident that you have, you. it, it is not something that you have read in a book. It is your journey that you have then turned around and put into books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely so. And I'm of the persuasion when you're able to... You follow open- me? And so I think that is just so, so huge because... Yes, yes. When you're able to overcome, when you're able to overcome it, I think that is so important. When when you're looking for a coach, and I'm, I'm kind of speaking to the audience for just a moment here. When you're looking for a coach, you're looking for someone to coach you. You want someone that has been through a variety of experiences. Notice I said through a mm-hmm. variety of experiences, and is in now in a position to articulate. That journey, the 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 ups and downs of that journey, and there and and also how you can get through that journey, and in in the material that you have in your books and your seminars, resources, and so forth, it really you really have a tangible means of getting you know people through because you know a lot of times and I, no disrespect to any coaches, but sometimes you know we, we go through these coaching sessions and. and and you're very motivated, and you're given a lot of motivation, but not necessarily something tangible. Like, for example, the journal, something t- tangible that I, I can take and do something with this, what, what Tarsha has given me, do something with this on a daily basis to keep me on track and to, to, to move me in the direction of discovering what my destiny is, discovering what my purpose this is understanding being able to hold up that mirror looking at the woman in the mirror being able to hold up that mirror and peel back the layers to see who she is to peel back those layers to to um, reveal the generational curses to own them to to be able to do what is necessary to uh, process through all of that that's what I'm getting from from um, your material so uh, you know Ladies, gentlemen, well, you speak most to, mostly to the ladies, but um, I, I'm encouraging y'all. You, you all need to go to the sister's website, Tarsha Campbell.
TarsaCampbellEmpowers.com. T-A-R-S-H-A-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L-E-M-P-O-W-E-R-S. TarshaCampbellEmpowers.com. Just a wealth of information um, here on all that she does. I mean, just, you know, different facets, all that she does, something for everyone, I believe. And if you are looking to find out, find your purpose, discover who you are, break those generational uh, curses, um, work with a vision board and, and, and to have a journal to work with, then I, then I would um, suggest that you uh, support my sister here. And I share with the audience how they can keep in touch, how they can utilize your services, your social media, all of those things. All right. Thank you so much. Um, you can you can connect with me on social media at Tarsha Campbell. Uh, that's Facebook. On Instagram, it's, uh, it's Coach Campbell. But if you just put in Tarsha Campbell, T-A-R-S-H-A, on any of the platforms, you'll you'll be sure to find me on LinkedIn, um, mm-hmm. um, Facebook, and also and uh, one of the main ways that you can stay connected to me, which I would love for you to do so, is to visit my website at Tarsha Campbell's, I mean, excuse me, Tarsha Campbell Empowers, and that's with an S at the end, dot com. There you can sign up to be on my mailing list and receive um, a a dose of empowerment every month through my my newsletter and the other uh, resources that I will be making available throughout the year. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and again, I encourage you, you know, a lot of you may be listening to this and you, you know, you're struggling with, you know, I don't know what my purpose is. I I don't know what I'm destined to do. I'm stuck. I would encourage you all to uh, visit my sister's website. Once again, Tarsha TarshaCampbellEmpowers.com. I mean, she's got everything here um, for you to, you know, look through and explore and discover and to find what is right for you. And you can reach out to her if you have any other questions or uh, comments. Tarsha, is there anything else that you'd like to share before we let you go? Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I really enjoyed this conversation, really enjoyed this conversation with you. So thank you so much. I enjoyed it too. You're, you're a great interviewer and ask some wonderful questions. Um, I just wanted to share with your listening audience, if they're in mm-hmm. the Endo area, um, yeah. but- having an, a what I'm calling Breakthrough 2020 Empowerment Healing Revival, a healing empowerment in, uh, revival, and I'm bringing in a very powerful gentleman, an apostolic voice that has overcome um, sickness at a, at a great degree, and now he walks in the power to help other people um, experience the healing that they need. And so my mm-hmm. whole vision for, for 2020, Point is to help people to upgrade their their lives in in the important areas of their finance, their health, and so this is the a kickoff event for this, this upgrade 2020. Because I believe in order for us to experience any level of of upgrade in the spirit or whatever it may be in our lives, we have to first come to a place of healing. And some people yeah. I notice they need physical healing, relational healing, emotional healing, and it's gotten us stuck. And so we got got to get beyond this place so that we can walk into what God has for us um, in 2020 and beyond. And that's going yes. to be here in the Orlando area. Um, you can visit my website. I'm going to have um, information or I'll go to my Facebook page right now and you can find the information there. February the 21st through the 22nd. If you're in the Orlando area, if you're not in the Orlando area, it's worth getting on a plane and being in <laughs> Because the Spirit of the Lord is <laughs> yes, yes, he will be there. <laughs> yes, amen, amen. And, you know, at this time of year in February, that's a wonderful time to go to Florida, you all. I'm just saying, wonderful time to go to Florida. <laughs> really? From the cold, cold parts of the country, y'all going down to Orlando to support, support Tarsha in February. Get a little sunshine, sand as well. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, Jerry, let's see if Batman has anything else before we yeah. close out. And maybe we'll have you close. Hey, man, one more time, yeah. Tarsha. Give us that website one more time. I want to I wanna, um, make sure I put that out there with the radio show. Okay. It's Tarsha Campbell Empowers. And Tarsha is T-A-R-S-H-A Campbell 
O C A M P B E L L empowers E M P O W E S E R S excuse me dot <laughs> get that right. <laughs> I know, right? right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to we want to make sure we stay connected with you, Tasha. Any authors that you you know as part of your or motivational speakers that's looking for a platform, we love to have them right here on Positive Power. And that's what we're about. Amen. All yes, right. Indeed. Yeah, and please, and, yeah. So please stay connected. If you whatever you have going on, just tag me. Um, yeah, I think we're connected now on social media, and I'm happy to support and share. And who knows? I, don't know, I might make a trip down there to Florida now. Oh, that's only a few good. hours. That's a day trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a day trip. That's right. <laughs> Two hours for me. Welcome to come. That's right. Yes, yeah, that's a day trip. All that's right. a day trip. All right, All right my sister. Would you? Uh, would you? Did you have something else, Batman? I was, I was going to say, um, yeah, I was going to just say we're going to introduce uh, uh, this song that uh, uh, Ree was uh, was so blessed to find for us, and uh, it was a beautiful song we okay. played on an earlier show. And I gave you the name of it, didn't I? What was the name of that show? Oh, I'm in love with the word. Delicia. Uh, yeah, Delicia. I'm in love. Oh, I'm in love with the word. In the word. With All the right. word. With the word. You're All right. right. Well, we have a song. Well, can we? Can we? <laughs> can we have Tarsha play, pray us out first, and then we'll we'll uh, close out with the song. Amen. All right, Tarsha, do you mind? I don't mind at all. I love to pray. All right. Okay. <laughs> The short version, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to come here tonight in this forum, and <laughs> live show, and broadcast. And Father, we ask right now that you would um, touch the words that have gone forth, Lord, tonight, and let it bring forth much fruit. We ask that those that have um, listened in and those that will listen to it in this archive state, God, that you will speak to their hearts and minds and let them realize, God, that they have a divine purpose that you call them to. Also, God, that the vision that you're showing them, that's you speaking, Lord. We ask that you will allow them to overcome every spirit of fear and intimidation that will cause them to doubt that you could use them And, Lord, we pray, God, that you release a power within them and a belief within them that, God, that they can be everything that you call them to be. And, Father, we ask this in your precious name of your son, Jesus. We ask that you would bring us back to your heart, God, in such a way that we can impact the people that you've called us to impact. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you share this file. I think y'all gave us some hearts. Did y'all give us some hearts tonight? I think y'all gave us some hearts tonight. We appreciate you. Make sure you share this file. And we just thank you so much for being a part of the Positive Power 21 family. Can you feel the power? We leave you this evening with Delicia. I'm in love with the word. Until next time, embrace the journey. I'm in love, 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 I'm in love with the word, 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 I'm in love, yeah. I'm a speech slurred, yeah. I don't know what to say. I hope you heard, yeah. When I tasted and saw that it was good, that's when this relationship occurred, yeah. At one time I couldn't see, the Lord made my vision unblurred, yeah. Wait, I need another eight bars. Lord, I love you for who you are. It's not about the fame and the fortune, all the nice clothes and the fancy cars. 